You're listening to News Talk 1400 KFRU. We don't always dabble as deeply in politics as we are this half hour, but I'm kind of having fun doing this. Frank Schaefer was lively and, and had his certain perspective, and we're going to hear another one now from Gwen Mandel. Is it Mandel or Mandel? It's Mandel. Mandel, coordinator of National Organizing for IndependentVoting.org. That's the website, IndependentVoting.org, which is a group that is a as self-described on that website, a national strategy, communications, and organizing center working to connect and empower the 40 percent of Americans who identify themselves as independents. Our mission is to develop a movement of independent voters for progressive post-partisan reform of the American political process. So, uh, Gwen, you deal in dreams. Is that right? <laughs> well, yes, David, and we deal in building a movement. Actually, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so glad to be speaking to you and your listeners about this very important topic. Good morning. We're looking between the lines at a group that has a lot of political power, but many in that group feel lacking in political rights. So it's now organizing in Ohio, independent voters. Uh, with us from the group Independent Ohio, Cynthia Carpatios and Franz Bauer, thanks for being here to explain your group's purpose and mission. Appreciate it. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Horizon's Vote 2012 coverage continues tonight with a closer look at independent voters. They represent 33 percent of Arizona's registered voters. It's about three percentage points higher than the number of registered Democrats. It's the first time in state history that independents outnumber voters belonging to one of the two major political parties. It kind of brings me to the question of are, are these, are these, I keep saying these, I'm an independent. I mean, who's kidding who here? I'm, I'm an independent voter for a variety of reasons. Back. This is Steve Sanchez, Jim Jones. With Veterans in Politics, we have Katana L. Barnes, President of Independent Voters of Nevada. Katana? Yes. Hey, how you doing today, ma'am? Not too bad, thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve and Jim, for having me on air. Not a problem. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Katana Barnes. I'm the President of Independent Voters of Nevada. We were formed in the late summer of 2010. We're a grassroots independent organization working to connect and empower those who identify themselves as independents as well as those who are independent minded. I'm not an expert on the economy. Who's to blame? I'm a medical doctor. I am an expert, though. For 25 years, I've been practicing internal medicine, and I recognize disease when it's systemic and uncontrolled. And the two parties are strangling our democracy. And I believe that we as a nation have to now turn our attention to reforming the political process, to healing the political process and doing something about the partisanship. As independents, we support political reforms, comprehensive, nonpartisan restructuring of the political process. We think that's at the heart of the dysfunction in Washington. Mm. We have a whole set of prescriptions mm. for reforms. What I think is important is that independents, which are the fastest growing group of American voters right now, really stay in and assert their voices because it's really the future that's important in terms of changing the political culture. Because without a change in the political culture, we're just going to keep going down this road of silliness. Okay. And Nancy Ross, director of national organizing for independentvoting.org. You, you know, we've heard a lot about independent voters in the past. And it, it, no matter what, no matter how many people have said that they're independents, they usually end up voting for either a Democrat or Republican. Why would we expect it to be different in 2012? Well, good morning, Celeste, and thank you for having me on. I mean, I, just to say, I think what you heard is what Americans all over the country are feeling, and I think that's why 40 percent, actually the polls show 38 to 40 percent of Americans consider themselves independents. They don't like partisanship. They don't like the intransigence in Washington. They're sick and tired of a process that isn't working. And what we found that the issue isn't whether they vote for a Democrat or Republican, there aren't many choices, but whether they, they want to vote for the best candidate. They want to vote for someone who they think will change the process. But the process is so locked up. But the majority of Americans don't belong to either party. A recent Gallup survey says that 38% of Americans consider themselves independents, key voters in the 2012 election, of course. So what do they think of the debt debate and who's winning? We're joined by a panel of independent voters. John Opdyke, he's the director for 
development for independentvoting.org. Gregory Moon, the president of Independent Voters of America, and Linda Rickey of Florida Sunshine Independence. Welcome to all of you. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. Good morning uh, Gregory, Allison. I want to start with you. And welcome back. I'm Gabrielle Komarowski. I'm Michael Cogdell for Nigel tonight. A federal judge in Greenville this morning heard arguments in a lawsuit that pits the South Carolina GOP against the state of South Carolina. It is a lawsuit that could change the way South Carolinians vote. Supporting the current open primary system is a coalition that includes members of the Legislative Black Caucus, the South Carolina Independence Party, and the Columbia Tea Party. So now it looks like the Republicans are setting up a process where they don't want Tea Party people, independents, blacks, white, red, or yellow that are not a part of the club to be a part of the political process. <laughs> We're also joined by Jason Olson, director of IndependentVoice.org, a political nonprofit that serves as the California branch of the independent movement. IndependentVoice.org has been involved in numerous advocacy and ballot initiative campaigns to open the primary, reform redistricting, and implement public campaign financing. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much for having me. To add to what Omar is saying, maybe from a different angle, I mean, the, the, the folks who do these polls, they're drawing the wrong conclusions because they're asking the wrong questions. Michael, welcome to Pure Politics. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on. I think most people actually remember you or maybe saw you for the first time from that infamous political video from CNN last year during the session where you and former governor and current Democratic Senator Julian Carroll had a little bit of a run in. We, we... And then there was Rick Robel, an attorney from Ohio, the toughest of our voter crew, toughest on me and on the way the candidates have run the campaigns. Unfortunately, it's been political hype rather than facts and critical thinking. The, it's the media that, uh, and you're an exception, by the way, but so much of the media is caught up in favoring one candidate or another and pushing political views rather than giving us independent journalism. What are you most concerned about in terms of issues facing the country for whoever makes it into the White House tomorrow? Well, I think the political system needs to be changed. We need to get rid of these things that are creating professional politicians who run the country for the purpose of getting themselves reelected. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Stewart. I'm the chair of the New York County Independence Party and the founder of Politics for the People. It's great to have you all here with us tonight, and I want to give a special welcome to our C-SPAN audience. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the people versus the parties. And we have with us two of America's leading advocates for a restructuring of our political process, Jackie Salit and former Congressman Mickey Edwards. 